So interesting topic happened the other day. Um, I listened to a podcast called DJs and Beers. It's possibly, quite possibly, one of the best podcasts um, in terms of electronic music, dance music, club culture, DJ culture, techno, whatever it may be called, that exists. I used to really like listening to Resident Advisor at the Exchange, but ever since Resident Advisor went, you know, uh, down the pan, the Exchange has kind of turned a bit turned to a bit turned to shit kind of no don't get me wrong it's not really their fault because they've basically interviewed everybody right there's nothing left to say a lot of people in dance music don't really like to get in front of the microphone even on the podcast and speak about things sometimes you want to you know remain mysterious and mis have that kind of sense of mystique around them sometimes they don't really think what they say has any kind of relevance or weight they don't really think what they have to say is all that interesting they think what they're doing is pretty normal which it isn't it's flipping amazing that they get to produce these amazing tracks that end up being a soundtrack to our lives that end up being you know tracks that we can kind of place hold um you know various events that happen to us it can be tracks that sort of spearhead us into you know different careers tracks that sort of land, launch us to go into different avenues all these amazing things but you know they probably don't really think um that they can hold a conversation or say anything that interesting but it's weird i don't know what it is but regardless there's not a lot of really good quality podcasts that exist out there talking with um, especially that are centered around people that are actually performing at an elite level within that space and DJs and Beers is probably one of the only ones because it's all DJs um, who are speaking on there they invite various people from the scene um, you know from bookers um, to managers to fellow DJs to producers to artists and they share loads of great war stories and I guess it's even I guess it's a better product now than it probably would have been if it, we weren't living in COVID because everyone's in a sort of nostalgic mood and they're all comparing notes from a career that they probably all maybe took a little bit for granted and they can't wait to get back on the road and on the stage doing what they love again. So they sort of use an opportunity to kind of tell people, you know, the many different stories that they've kind of, you know, uh, collated over the many years. And this recent one that they had, I'm not sure what episode number it is, but just check it out. Um, it kind of features one of the guys that's involved with the booking that fabric and another dude who's um i've got to say heading up a booking or management agency um i think that's pr or something on those lines anyway along that topic they were speaking about fabric reopening and it's uh, kind of obviously great news for me being a club kid and also being somebody that's obsessed with going to you know various different places and being obsessed with uh you know engracing myself in the in the culture itself um but an interesting argument in terms of what happens now going forward with um fabric in terms of their approach to things right because if you're not familiar fabric is obviously one of our main clubs here in uk and london it's obviously got a um, very long and storied history within um dance music scene but it's gone through a little you know a, a few bumps along the road especially when they had to close due to that drug bus and unfortunate occasion when a couple of kids passed away due to being you know, due to ingesting some drugs they probably shouldn't have taken or maybe they were sold some buff stuff but regardless of the issue they went regardless of the circumstances or what exactly happened um some very unfortunate circumstances led to the places you know abrupt closure then they had the whole licensing thing and it's kind of from the last time that i've been there it's not really i in my in my experience when i've been there it kind of felt like the weight of all those situations is weighing heavy on the club and it just felt like a really um weird place to party um, from the security check to going in it's just a really strenuous experience it doesn't necessarily fill you with glee to go and dance on the dance floor it takes a lot for me to decide to kind of forego the other venues that we have here in london and directly focus my attention to going to fabric and quite honestly the lineups are pretty crap for the most part in my opinion um, obviously now they've kind of changed things and as the guy mentioned on the podcast DJs and Beers they're specifically trying to cultivate this residence play this residence roster where they can basically have a group of DJs who are kind of you know on different uh, stages of their journey in terms of you know their DJing career and have them playing various days along the weekend and then obviously uh, supplement well having them play various days along the weekend and then obviously having some big headliners that come in who can then kind of pull a bit of a crowd but basically making sure most of their programming is centered around these residents which I think is great it's a lost art here in the UK we don't really have it for some reason I know why because you know the ticket prices and bars need to make money on the on, on the bar to kind of justify keeping a 
the lights on and hiring security. So more often than not, they much prefer to have promoters come in, do one off shows per month or, you know, bi monthly, book really big DJs in who can command a good ticket price, who can sell tickets, and most importantly, because that is also something that um, is probably on the front of everyone's mind when they're making events. And that essentially then um, re, uh, kind of pushes back the ability for resident advisors to have a career or to have any sort of way of slowly but surely working their way up the DJ circuit, which is why, in my experience, because I'm a DJ myself, I have found most of the people who are successful from my sort of like lower to middle tier, usually the best way to get kind of like to jump a few tiers or to kind of get yourself in the, in the, in the right places is to befriend a certain promotion group, befriend a production crew, befriend a, uh, befriend, promotion, befriend a, a club, um, get involved that way or, or even just set up your own club night. That's the only way to kind of get yourself involved. If you want to do the whole risen advisor, the kind of esoteric, not esoteric, the kind of ideal way, which you kind of see promoted in Germany and and sometimes in places like Holland as well, where you have a, a set amount of people that play every weekend or on set days during the week, maybe a Thursday and a Friday, um, in places like Munich and shit. And then you know, then the, they get they get an understanding of the club, they get to develop their sound. The punters come in, they get an idea of what they play, blah blah blah. blah you get a connection, and obviously you kind of grow over time. That stuff doesn't really exist because of that. But obviously, through this conversation on the users and beers, that resident advisor booker is basically saying that, no, I want to change things. I want things to change for the better. And now they've just announced just the other day um, that res obviously Fabric is reopening for the weekend and it's looking like a pretty decent affair. So this is from uh, Friday, 25th of June. It says, as the world unlocks from the COVID restrictions, we are looking forward to welcoming artists and clubbers back, as, uh, 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 back um, at EC1 with a weekend-long celebration of the UK-based talent and residents blending house, techno, DMB, and more. So no DJs announced, zero lineup, put out the tickets, um, you know, back-to-back -back weekends and just going for it. Do you know what I mean? And I think this is great. But I think for the future of club culture in the UK, especially in London, and for the kind of possibility for people like myself to maybe eventually get to a level where i'm playing like a headlining set somewhere in a club or i'm commanding a big stage somewhere on a festival this is the only option this is the only way things will change is if the industry allows their uh, permits an option or a way for people like myself or people who are a bit higher than my higher than me especially the ones in the middle tier i feel more sorry for to basically able to do because you know if you're in the middle tier you most likely wouldn't have played these sort of places un unless covid happened unless we're, brexit happened as well because you know the possibility for these places to go and fly in big headlining european acts kind of dwindles and then obviously that increases their demand in europe they end up charging more of a fee that then prices them out of maybe coming to the uk because of the visas and all that sort of shit so it's an advantageous moment and i'm just hoping now because again it's it's twofold it's not just it's threefold it's not even just the artists it's not even just the, the venues and the bookers and promoters it's up to us as well as punters to back these nights we have to go and vote with our feet because the unfortunate um reality of the situation is as much as people hate it those business techno people they sell tickets they move numbers right they command the fee that they are you know sometimes unfairly asked for especially during hard times i've heard of rumors of you know some very prominent techno business techno people refusing to lower their fees right because they're saying yeah it's a buyer's market right um there's not a lot of places open i'm a rare commodity i can actually move tickets so if you want me to play you have to pay my my fee and some to guarantee my um appearance so you know some people are being you know as uh cunty as you would expect them to be but there's a reason why they command that fee is because they can legitimately sell tickets um, and they can obviously pr uh, bring a crowd in that's going to buy drinks at a bar and not try and slip stuff in in their sock and shit. So that is a reason. So I guess it's up to us as punters and customers to kind of change the narrative. We'll obviously be hungry to go out now because we've all been locked indoors for flipping ages, but we need to go out and vote with our feet, attend these places, attend these raves that are happening over the next, you know, few weeks or what, when July happens anyway. Well, yeah, June July is it July? It's July, isn't it? July or June, sorry, June twenty first onwards. We need to be the ones voting with our feet and in order to kind of push push it so that fabric have no other option but to continue this sort of thing. Because if this doesn't work, you can't then complain if they go and book all the standard business techno people and put them on lineup because you know they know that works too. Um they know that works for sure. Anyway, continues here. While we're excited to reopen, this will be a dependent on our confidence in being able to do it in safely under the government sanctioned COVID protocols. We'll do it if we can be sure. Um as with everything under COVID 
the opening date may change as we follow the government's scientific advice and on when to hold and when to open. And if we have to push back, the reopening tickets would be transferable or, of course, be fully refundable. Unfortunately, we can't promise a refund of the booking fee. Cool. And also that as well. Don't be a knob as well. If you buy a ticket for an event, especially um, with these kind of TBC requirements kind of coming involved, uh, don't be a prick and start demanding refunds and shit. Take the risk. Back the clubs. If it doesn't happen, hold on to the ticket. Don't Don't refund it. You're going to be able to use it sooner rather than later anyway when the world re does reopen, even if it's not exactly on June 21st. So buy at your own risk, but also don't be a knob. Um, it continues, as with everything on the COVID, the opening date may change. Da, da, da. The love from all that we've been to entry at Fabric. So those tickets are going to go on sale, I think, according to their Instagram on the 5th or oh, tomorrow. So it should be on sale. Yes, yeah, so tomorrow. Tomorrow is in tomorrow or tomorrow is in today seven hours ago i'm gonna to say tomorrow's in today it's 5 p.m so definitely check out if you haven't purchased those already they're definitely going to be flying out even if they're 35 quid people are not going to give a shit um even if they're 50 quid they're not going to give a crap so definitely get involved but again i'm interested to see how this progresses forward i'm interested to see if this is going to be the method going forward if they're going to have we're going to have to rely on residents because the evidence so far suggests it's not going to happen Everyone's kind of talking a big game and, you know, being all optimistic and less cynical as they probably would have been. But from what we've seen of these playgraves, most of these playgraves, with the with the exception of maybe the possession parties they put together, most of them contained either one, more than one business techno kind of, I mean, yeah, business techno kind of person. Like they didn't, you know, they I didn't see any other playgrave happened, even the illegal, even the legal ones that didn't involve someone that has some sort of connection with the business techno lot. So let's see i'm hoping for the best hoping for the best but you know you never know next on the list here uh, uh we have good news too um crank brothers are putting together a little party as well that's gonna be pretty decent uh crank brothers present shoreditch street party dixon playing for six hours man as you can see, I've already registered. It's on the 31st of July on a Saturday, so it gives them plenty of time to plan. If things get pushed back to, they've got a lot of room to kind of wiggle and shit. As you can see, this is usually where they host it. It's a little street off of Shoreditch that they basically cut off from everybody else and turn into a bit of an outdoor party. It's a pretty decent idea, to be fair. And probably the only... It's probably the kind of thing that Shoreditch want to promote more so than clubs and stuff because they're a bit you know, nervous about there being stabbings and stuff like that happening in that sort of area. But they'd much rather stuff stuff like this and, and things that you'd see in Box Park, they're super popular because they kind of welcome, you're able to kind of welcome a different sort of clientele than you would have maybe doing a club. Um, more varied, um, probably uh, let's say people with a lot more disposable income. Um, again, because it's a locked in event, uh, it's all kind of self in self enclosed. You have people there selling food and shit, merch. It's a great way to kind of just clock up the extra bit of dweller in your little bank account if you're the promoter. But of course, you've got necessary risk permits, installing a sound system. It's a whole affair, but it's gonna be fucking awesome, especially in London summers. Imagine the, the heat bearing down on you outdoors. You know, pretending you smoke cigarettes, <laughs> drinking your flipping red stripe that's warm, right? Boom, 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 boom. It's going to be a vibe. It's going to be a vibe. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. <laughs> 